Well, I was an addict and an alcoholic for 40 years. This is the first time I've had a place probably in five or six years. It's given me a different focus on life. People in Edmonton want this situation dealt with, and these people dealt with fairly, equitably, and giving their lives back. It gives them hope. It gives them stability. It gives them security. It doesn't just take them off from off the streets into the program and then leave them alone. I'm very thankful, you know, to be have a place of my own, own now. It's actually a real nice place. The Housing First program has been uh, a really exciting uh, initiative to be involved in because we're making a uh, dramatic difference in people's lives. We launched the plan just over a year ago and we thought we had some pretty lofty targets and yet here we are uh, just over a year later and uh, we, we've far exceeded those targets. I mean the most obvious one is you know housing more than 500 people in the past year. I think that's huge success uh, in terms of, of the plan. The success right now is um, first of all because the province is committed to putting money into homelessness and into housing and, the mo and, the, and housing first model but it's a great deal to do with how the agencies are working together. And when people cooperate, you accomplish a lot more. So we hope that uh, this tremendous level of cooperation will continue. We can work together, and I think at the end of the day, we can reach our goal. We hope sooner than 10 years, but for sure within the 10-year period. We're very fortunate to have some members of the housing sector who've been very progressive. You know, we've got uh, organizations that have outreach teams that are changing the way they do outreach. A Housing First philosophy uh, centers around getting individuals housed in market housing, supporting them so that they can maintain tenancy and gain independence in their lives. We don't just move them in and then leave them alone and say have fun, hope you enjoy your life, see you later. Um, because depending on people's circumstances, they may not have lived inside for years. That's where the support program comes in. And if necessary, take them grocery shopping or going over a budget with them or connecting them to the programs and resources that are relevant. I like to say we treat the homelessness for providing a home and then we treat other conditions that the client may have. When the doctor call, called and told me about, about the aneurysm, I took a really bad bed. Um, I, didn't, I didn't know what to expect. I was ter terrified. I ended up with that, having to leave my job not being able to uh, pay, pay the rent, uh, we were evicted from, from our premises. Had no family around where I can go stay. So we ended up on the street. Well, when I met Doris, um, she was receiving inadequate income. Uh, and she had uh, very little access to the services that she needed. If, the, if I didn't find out about the, this pro program, I'd probably be found somewhere in a gutter. My life has changed dramatically. I'm getting help from na neighbors for my brain injury, uh, for, for speech. I'm getting help with the city to find my way around again because nothing is familiar anymore. I'm also getting help through the Boyle Street Community Center. They are the best. Because without them, you know, I wouldn't be here either. So I had them to thank for being here. The Housing First is an amazing program that's helped a lot of people from off the streets get into housing. What shows that the program is effective is that people are willing to change and they, and they use the program to have positive change. The program, it, got, it kept me off the street and it gave me enough time to get some clean time so I could start thinking clearly. Well, I was an addict and an alcoholic for 40 years. And just about 18 months now since I got involved with the YMCA, I've quit. Before I wound up in the YMCA, I wasn't going any place. Like, I went to a doctor and she told me if I spent another winter outside, I wouldn't make it. He's reconnected with his family. He's, con he's contacted all his debtors. He's restarted his child support payments. 
He's looked at options for um, going back to work. Now that I have a home, I feel like I have something now. If it wasn't for this program, you wouldn't be sitting here interviewing me right now because I wouldn't be here. I've seen a lot of progress with uh, many clients. They seem to take a new lease on life. You know, and it's because they're investing in a home and they're getting a new circle of friends. Stability brings a lot of good things to people's lives. So. Welcome to my home. Come on in. I'll show you a little bit of my place. How's my life changed? Well, I'm 50, 40, 50 pounds heavier. I have teeth, I have a beautiful fiance, I have two beautiful dogs, I have a bird, I have a beautiful condo. Um, I love my life, I will never go back. I work at a place called Homeward Trust. It's for people from the street, these people find jobs for you and they make you interact back with the public or learn how to work again. Hi, thank you. My plans for the future are to grow old with my fiance. Um, to continue having the relationship with my mother before she passes away. Just to have family, it's all about it's family. It's just the way life's supposed to be. Thank you very much from Thank the bottom you. of my heart. Very much appreciated. <laughs> have a good day. And I've lost 20 years of my life. I don't want to lose another 20. This is a 10-year plan. It's a 10-year commitment. The success we've had in year one, no doubt, is, is very motivating for all of us. But we're going to have to stay focused on that plan. We're going to have to stay focused on that goal. Funding Housing First means that you fund stories like Bill's story. That you, you're, you're funding real people with real lives and real faces who are making positive changes in their life. For me, this program has saved my life. It has bottom line. That's what it's done. I was asked the question recently by an individual, do you really think we can end homelessness? And my answer was absolutely. Um, and that's based on that spirit uh, in the community that says we have to do this, we will do this. Um, and there's nothing standing in the way other than ourselves. So I'm feeling really positive about the future. I have a bright outlook, I'm strong, I'm a fighter. And I failed to give up. <laughs> I know that maybe five to ten, ten years from them now, I'll probably be, you know, singing like a songbird and, you know, remembering the words to the songs that I used to sing. Um, I didn't think it would be possible because I came from a bad home. And not only did I get an apartment, I got a job. I got real friends, family, um, and it's it's catchy. <laughs> People in Edmonton want this situation dealt with, and these people dealt with fairly, equitably, and give them their lives back. I was praying, and I asked um, God to help me get a place, to get me into a warm place. And uh, I was tired of being alone. Yeah, I lived in a field by the airport. Yeah, yeah I slept in the middle of a field. Um, it was a bad place because it's really windy there, and I got buried by the snow, and I got frostbite in my heel last year, this past year, and they had to cut a chunk of my heel off because my foot turned black, because my boot froze to my foot. And then, next thing you know, I got help from the Pistol Center here, and uh, I moved into their group home. And then, like, a couple weeks later, I 
found a girlfriend. <laughs> it was really weird. It's like a miracle. Thank God I have a place to live now. I'm so happy about that. We believe we can end homelessness, not just manage it, no more soup kitchens and shelters. Uh, one of the reasons I'm optimistic is we have such strong support from our leadership, right from our mayor, right through the whole leadership committee. Uh, we had 800 people that took part in the consultation sessions, and there, uh, so I think there's a real will to uh, solve this issue in Edmonton. There is a much greater chance of success because you have a variety of perspectives coming together and all of us have a commitment to see something happen. Um, if you have a small group of community agencies get together and say, we want to make a difference, well, that's nice. We can make a difference on our own level. But when you add the business and the politicians at the table, absolutely, a tremendous chance in uh, increasing the chances of success. No doubt in my mind. The Premier has put into place almost task force and, uh, and we're liaisoning with them and, uh, and they, we hope, will be the funding agent for this process. Uh, but, you know, it's all of our responsibilities. It's easy to say that it's your fault or my fault, but it's all of us are in this together. I think most people see a homeless person on the street and think, well, you know, it may be very sad and they might wish that something could be done to help a person who, who is without a home. But I don't think they realize how much it costs us. And I think that has been a surprise to all of us. It costs uh, at least $100,000 per uh, homeless person on the street to uh, society. And we know we can house them for in the uh, for around thirty-five to forty thousand uh, dollars per year, so there is a, a big economic incentive. But, you know, when you think of the cost of someone in a shelter for a year, that's forty thousand uh, dollars. One out of uh, every five call to our emergency management services is a person who's homeless. And one of the uh, ones that I found actually quite staggering was uh, the length of hospital stay. The average stay is about nine days a year. But for a homeless person that requires hospital care, it, the average is 66 days a year. So just think of the cost of that to society. Well, I've worked at the Royal Alec, which is an inner city emergency department. One major problem is homelessness. When you don't have anywhere to go, if you're hungry or you have no place to sleep, many people end up in a hospital emergency department. That's a place some of them call home. One person I I recall has visited us 750 times, many times, uh, by ambulance. Many of the people who are on the streets have severe mental health issues, be it schizophrenia or depression. If you don't have a home, you don't have a place to keep your medication. I've seen hundreds of patients who are on the streets, they lose their medications, or they lose insight, or someone steals their medications. But when you have a home, you have a place to keep them, you have a team that's helping you to get, to get you on the right path. When you look at what's happening in the United States, it's all built around this notion of housing first. And what um, that means is that in order for uh, an individual to be able to deal with a lot of the issues that they, they have, whether it's a lack of a job, whether it's an addiction problem, whether it's um, a emotional or, me or mental health issues, that one of the first things everybody needs is the stability of a roof over their heads. There are many other cities, particularly in the United States, where they have de developed 10-year plans and they're actually seeing progress. For example, in Portland, uh, the chronic homelessness have been uh, reduced by 70 percent in four years' time. We are doing a lot already. The question is what can we do that's perhaps more effective, more direct, uh, perhaps we can apply resources in different ways. Just Place Health and Wellness Centre is a drop-in centre. Uh, we like to service the needs of the homeless. But at the core of what we try to do is run a relationship centre and build meaningful relationships with people. And it's through those relationships that we can then help to house them and get to understand their needs and what, what kind of housing would work for them. When we find a need for someone to, to get housed, we call the landlord and set up an appointment and we'll either go with the, with the client or we'll just go by ourselves and we'll just make our case. A person trying to survive on $400 a month, and then you pay your phone bills and power bills and stuff like that, and it don't give you a lot. Like I had nothing, you know, no clothes, no nothing. The first time I met James at the center, uh, he was downcast, so I knew that there were some problems. I didn't know what the extent was. I, uh, he had told me that he just got out of, the, out of the hospital and he was staying at a friend's. 
I've had my heart stop and started several times. And going from earning big money in construction down to on assistance now, and it's been a big drastic change in life. So I went right to work with him, uh, started calling places. We found a one bedroom for him, and we met the landlord, and it, it went really well. And before we knew it, at the end of the day, we had a place. They set me up with a couch and a new bed and a, and a kitchen table. It's just that little extra feeling, you know, from sleeping on the floor to sleeping in a bed and getting a good sleep is uh, helpful and good. It's nice, you know, you can put your stuff down or whatever and go home at night and it's still there. You know? <laughs> Housing First brings that support worker into your life. And that support worker establishes you in that neighborhood. My family's starting to come around now that I've got like a year and a half in without drinking. So to have my own place, this is what helped me keep straight. And if it wasn't for that, I mean, somebody would have dug a hole a long time ago. It's just amazing to watch somebody that's been living on the street for months, maybe years, and finally get a set of keys in their hand and be able to go and close that door and, and lock it brings so much hope and satisfaction to somebody's life. It's incredible, absolutely incredible. They've saved my life. I came to them at about a buck fifty. Um, I'm HIV, Hep C. A common cold could have killed me. And when I walked in and asked these two gentlemen to help me, it was a hard thing for me to do because I grew up in the street. I am one of the baddest people you can meet. And since these guys opened up their arms, I'm 40 pounds heavier. My immune system went from 8% to 400. My HIV is very detectable. Um, I owe them my life. First time I met Charles, well, uh, he came into the center. And typical, uh, you know, street tough guy, uh, you know, got the swagger going, came swaggering in. And he was there just to service himself. You know, he needed a cup of coffee, maybe he needed a shower, and then he was gone again. I'm 42 now. Um, I moved out here in 1990. I was introduced to cocaine since then. Um, I've been on the street 25 years, maybe five at the most. I lived in an apartment or, or somebody else's place. The other 20 was on the street or crack houses. Can you imagine going, if you've never rented a home and you've lived on the street your whole life, can you imagine going into a situation as intimidating as meeting a landlord and saying, I want to rent this apartment off you? And, and they put a piece of paper in front of you and say, well, great, just fill out this form. I got no credit. I got no history. I got no references. For me to go get an apartment and fill out a piece of paper, I might as well have to hand it to you blank because that's what it is. And for you to give me a set of keys to a blank piece of paper, ain't going to happen. As a support worker, we can come alongside and say, we'll help you fill out that form. And by the way, we're the support for this apartment. So you can call us. If you have a problem with this tenant, don't even go to the tenant. We'll come and work with the tenant. And we are the credit check. We are the reference check. We will be there. We will fix that apartment if it gets damaged. And landlords really have come to understand that when we rent an apartment, we're renting that apartment for life. One way or another, someone will be living in that apartment that has come from the street, and maybe they'll live there six months, maybe they'll live there six years, maybe they'll live there 30 years, but that apartment will never go on the market again. Now that my name's on the lease, maybe a few years from now, up two or three years in, I'm paying my own rent and have my own place, where next time I go to find a place, I don't need them. I have a piece of paper that's got something on it. Charles has been on the street 20 years. He hasn't done a lot of cooking. And learning how to cook again, how to, how to menu plan, how to buy potatoes and meat and a vegetable, put it together in a pot and cook it. How to stretch your dollars to budget. So they take me shopping, they help me with my medical, they've got me my ID, they're there whenever you need them. And if I do something wrong, they, 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 just, they don't come down on you. It's not our job to say, hey, you gotta stop using drugs. It's our job to support them when they make that decision to stop using drugs, that they have the proper support that helps them, enables them to uh, keep off the drugs and, and to find that way to reduce their drug use. You need help. You, you need friends, you need love. If not, you'll die alone and you'll die on the streets. And I didn't want that. I'm tired. I'm old. And thanks to them, 
I have a chance to live again. And I might be able to see my kid graduate, which is, it's, it's just, I can't say much. All I can say is thank you from the bottom of my heart. These gentlemen reached out and gave me my own place, a home, a home. This is my home. And I owe them thanks. It's, it's all, that's all I wanted was my own home. And I got it, finally. There's a man on the corner with a sign in his hand. I need money for food tonight. Won't you help me if you can? Help me if you can. See the mother on the street corner turning tricks to pay the rent. You know she's gonna get lucky if she gets out alive again. Can't you get out alive again? Can't you hear them call? Won't you let?